Hi, welcome to another five minute tip. In this tip, we're gonna look at the MoGraph cloner and how you can control the distribution of clones on an object's surface. So for this demo, we have a sphere. I'll make the sphere blue and we'll get some clones going. I'm gonna use a cube as my clone and I'll make the clones red. So now we have a cube and a sphere. We also need a cloner. So I'm gonna to go to the MoGraph menu, grab myself a cloner. Now, the cloner has a few options. The mode is the most notable. We're gonna change that to object. That changes the other parameters a bit. We can now choose an object for the clones to be placed on. So let's make that our sphere. So now that we have our object in place, we can place our clones inside of the cloner and we get cubes all over our sphere. Of course, they're too large. So I'm just going to scale them down. So we have clones all over our sphere. Going back to the cloner settings, we can see that the default distribution is vertex. Let's change that to surface. That looks a lot more like what we want. Let's change the clone count to a thousand. So now we have a lot of clones all over the surface, but we have very little if no control of where those clones appear. Now, there are ways to use a polygonal selection to control where those appear. And I did a video on that. It's the one with sesame seeds on a bagel. Now, it would be a lot better if we could use a texture for this. So what we can do is we can go to our material manager here and let's make a new texture. This texture is gonna have a color channel that will have a surface and let's use tiles. Here they are, just off screen. Now, when I edit the tile shader, I wanna change it to circles. I think that's fine for now. Maybe I'll just change these red ones to white. There we go. So now I can apply this circle texture to my sphere and I can also control how frequently it appears, how large the circles are, and all those other sorts of things. For this demo, let's try making the circles a little bit larger, like maybe 200%. There we go. So what we'd love to do is use this texture to control where the clones appear. Let's do that. In order to do that, we need to select our cloner and add a new effector. We're going to use a shader effector. Now, because we have the cloner selected, the shader effector is already added to this cloner. So now we can select our shader effector. Now there's a couple of tabs we're interested in, shading and parameter. Let's look at shading first. First thing we need to do is choose the channel. Now we placed our tiles texture on the color channel. So let's choose color. Once we do that, it asks us for a texture tag. Well, let's give it the texture tag we created. Okay. Now. If you're sharp-eyed, you'd notice that the clones were modified when I did that. But anyway, let's go to the parameter tab. Scale was what was changed. Scale is the default parameter selected, but it's not the one we're interested in. Let's check visibility instead. All of a sudden, the visibility of the clones is controlled by the texture. Just for emphasis, let's go back to scale. Now, if we change this to negative one, it means that completely white areas, the clones are tiny, so tiny that they disappear. Black areas, the clones are large, 100% scale. We can tweak this a little bit by going to the shading tab and we can modify things here. Let's invert the alpha and we can see that the exact effect has been inverted. This in itself should be pretty useful, but I'm gonna show you how we can take this one step further. Let's imagine we had this model of the earth. I grabbed a earth texture off the internet and I also grabbed a population density map off the internet. I have both of these applied to my sphere. Now, if we were to use MoGraph to scatter people all over the earth or icons representing people like this little cone that I have over here, it would look really unrealistic if the distribution of the people were uniform. So. We can apply this population density map and we can see here really densely populated areas versus areas where there's no people, the deserts, the rainforest, the Arctic. Anyway, 
we can use this exact same technique here. So let's grab our sphere, add our cones to the cloner, and in our cloner, let's change it to object. Once we give it an object, we can change the distribution to surface. Now that our distribution is pretty random, let's, uh, let's do 2000. We need to tweak our playback a little bit. That may have been ambitious for my video card. So now we can do that same thing. We select our cloner, we go to our shader, shader effector rather. And then in the shading tab, we can change it to color, drag our population density texture tag into the slot, and then go to parameter, uncheck scale, check visibility. Now, we saw that we had to check the invert checkbox last time. And if you look here at the very dense populated areas, that's happening again. So we just go to our shaders shading tab and check the alpha box. Now we have these spikes or icons, these representations only in areas where there are a lot of people. Now you can tweak this and play with this, generate your texture maps in Photoshop to get whatever effect you want or need. And the best part is you don't need to show the map that the cloner is using to generate the distribution. If I take my earth texture and I just drag it on top of my population texture, we get the effect of the black and white texture on top of the colored texture. So this was inspired by a friend of mine who was trying to create this effect. And I decided I should look into it and see how that's done. I hope you guys enjoyed this tip. It's a really simple one. It's really MoGraph 101, but MoGraph is such a deep, complex, feature rich set of tools that many of us just have not the time to dig into all of the possibilities. Anyway, I hope you liked it, and until next time, have fun.